of great oncology is an educational program um, involving 49 clinical oncologists from throughout the nation of Nigeria who came together um, to have updates in many of the um, solid tumors, um, treatment, uh, diagnosis, and management. So every year we mobilize over 1,000 people in Abuja to work against cancer. We raise funds, create awareness, provide food screening and support to people by the Upgrade Oncology is a response to a national call to support the government on cancer control. Upgrade Oncology is a program bringing people from all over Nigeria, from me and Dr. Tracy O'Connor, who's an associate professor at Roswell Park, to go through an update. Upgrade Oncology has been um, a program of immense benefits to aspiring oncologists and consultant oncologists as well. For the benefit of a participant that has just come in, uh, this is a seven-year-old patient with a uh, histologically confirmed uh, abdominal sarcoma. Well, I've abuse. learned a lot from the skills and experience and I realized that sometimes the guideline is just to guide you but sometimes you have to look at the patients and make some decisions. Dr. Tracy O'Connor and Dr. Mike Martin uh, join us through the Fulbright Specialist Program to host a two-week medical training um, conference and workshop. We are truly excited about this knowledge exchange and the potential it has to transform cancer treatment in Nigeria. I applaud the efforts of our exchange alumnus, Runsi uh, Chidebe, and his team in taking steps to support the implementation of the Government of Nigeria's National Cancer Control Plan through mutual collaboration and partnerships, and I wish all the doctors present a very fruitful learning exchange. It is our hope that um, our physicians and all those health professionals involved in cancer care will benefit greatly from this endeavor, and that we hope that this is the first in a long collaboration. Sharing ideas with the faculties from the United States has actually broadened my I mean, uh, idea and knowledge about oncology generally, especially the medical oncology aspect of it. There are general parameters that we all use to consider when to hold subsequent chemotherapy that includes a low white blood cell count or absolute neutrophil count below 1500. It has made a lot of difference because you know there are some things we, we got to know for the very first time. I was given the topic of immuno-oncology um, which I understand is not the most practical thing for me to be talking about, but it is an absolutely remarkable thing that we have. Right? Well, the training had been very helpful, very insightful, had really upgraded us in so many ways, and uh, just like I said, it's like a continuous medical education, telling us things we don't know, the ones we know solidified, solidified and uh, hopefully to give us a better approach to our management of cancer patients in Nigeria. <laughs> so, it's just, it's just the same thing that happens here. So, after going through all these channels, it came back to, I'm an oncologist, I'm a lifesaver, and a caregiver, and I love what I do. And what we heard was, he didn't even say I'm an oncologist, he said he's an oncologist. <laughs> and I don't like me. No, he doesn't like me. <laughs> It's actually interesting because we could actually interact most of the time, not really like lecturing. We could ask some feedbacks and discuss patient care in terms of what we see in our own environment. I mean, in comprehensive with what they actually have in their own end. So it's like a, I mean, a exchange of an idea and exchange of knowledge. And we actually learn a lot of the, I mean, uh, great things from them. Between the difference between myself before and, and, and I haven't come for this program is 7-Up. What I mean is my knowledge has become a bit more um, expanded. And when I'm treating somebody who is really big, 
yeah, you don't have as much of a problem here at all as we do, but I can have people whose BMI is like 40. Um, and the dose is actually that you calculate is really, really high. When you have the opportunity to attend, you know, programs like this, it, you know, it will definitely have an impact on, you know, your practice. And so in the long run, I think my practice generally is going to be upgraded if I might borrow that <laughs> word. <laughs> I found the training to be fascinating. Um, all of the participants were really engaged asking wonderful questions and presenting really challenging cases from their practices. In addition, we spent some time at local hospitals and we were able to see um, patients being treated in the oncology clinics. All right guys, so there's I think 40 hats. So people in the front pick the one you like and pass the back. The people in the back get the last choice. <laughs> Participants have been engaged, enthusiastic, asked great questions. They're facing incredible odds in some cases, and they, they're, they're compassionate, great doctors who I, I've really enjoyed the sessions, and hopefully they have too. I will show you a slide for lung cancer tomorrow, uh, whenever I talk about lung cancer, for the use of bevacizumab in lung cancer from the FDA approved study, okay? I like the fact that the trainers and the faculty, they came with um, to tell us what we can do given what we already have. They backed up everything they had to say with evidence. Dr. Martins and Dr. Tracy, they've been wonderful people. They've really been very resourceful and I really gained a lot. Uh, Project Pink Blue did a great job. And getting that combination was a perfect moment for me. They are, they are intelligent, you know, they are up to date. They know their stuff, they, they work with trials and everything. So I, I, they are wonderful people and I'm really proud to, to have been taught by them. Uh, Dr. Mike and Tracy, absolutely brilliant. Uh, one of the best, if not the best speakers I've met. The area we are talking about is not yet fully developed in the country and we are talking about oncology service. The aim of bringing this thing is to help people, to help our people. I think what I learned from them is how um, resourceful um, people can be when they're trying to treat cancer patients in a more limited um, environment in terms of what treatment options are available to you. Um, they've been very um, helpful with helping me understand the local um, situation, all the situations very different throughout the hospitals. Um, I think they have enormous amounts of empathy and compassion for their patients and they clearly are highly motivated to improve the situation in Nigeria for cancer patients. There's a system in Nigeria. It may not be functional, but there is a system. So I learned a lot about Nigeria from them. I learned a lot about taking care of people and making really hard decisions in tough circumstances. And I applaud them. I, they have less resources than I do because I practice in the United States and they do an amazing job and I'm just very, very impressed with them. Uh, those of us that are privileged to be here would have to go back and train some of our colleagues that are still, you know, back in Lagos. So. Intend on getting some of the other doctors where I'll sit down, we'll have a kind of discussion and lectures, share materials so that we can have a better practice and achieve a better result. I'm going to start with what I've learned. I'm going to teach my fellow oncologists when I get back to my center. And as much as possible, I'm going to ensure that I get the right stuff every time. And I'm going to read more. Puja Bing Blue has actually brought us a good thing by giving us the opportunity to actually have this kind of training. It's actually a means to tell us that we're not doing bad here but at the same time, we can actually improve more. I must give them a lot of credit, it's not easy. So uh, what I can tell them is uh, keep up the good work. I'm very, very impressed. I think they've done really, really well. Dr. Tuo, he made a statement that Project Pink Blue is about the best NGO in the country as regards cancer control. So I think that summarizes everything. The, the, the Project Pink Blue, they are doing a, a wonderful job. It's not easy to organize such, um, you know, training of such magnitude. This is what we as clinicians have not been able to do over the, over the years. For putting on this program together, they've done a good job, which is not easy. And I think this is the first of its kind where you'll be able to pull 
oncologists from different aspects of the country. So I want to say a big thank you to them and I want to say uh, well done to them for doing a great job. Project Pink Blue is doing an amazing job um, advocating for cancer patients in Nigeria. I'm particularly impressed with the patient navigation program, which really seeks to um, get patients around the time of diagnosis and find them additional support and treatment options um, through their treatment course for their cancer. What Project Pink Blue does is not limited to just things like this, these education sessions and training sessions. Um, they also do a lot of outreach and education media appearances, etc., which I think are extremely important. If they're caught early, they're highly curable. Um, so I think the point is to encourage more patients to seek screening so that they can be diagnosed at a much earlier stage. To actually get the word out, they're doing amazing work. Thank you. I just appreciate you guys being here and I hope you guys have some fun.